So I'm like, the baby breathes through the nose. It's not mine. I mean, that makes sense. Okay, so how come you understand this, but the judge wants to be like, oh, we got to do DNA? Listen, man. Oh, this is a dub, man. What's on, you know, what's on TV, man? Oh, shit, Idris Elba. Yeah! yeah. Oh, my God! Ah, oh. Shit, we love to interview him, him right? I oh, fuck no one show a late night, nothing but illustrious guest. Mira, who is in the virtual bodega tonight? Oh, man, it's the homie. It's blood clot Idris Elba in it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Heimdall, blood sport, the string of bell, you know what I'm saying? London, all my council estates. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Big up, <laughs> man, them. <laughs> 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 my God, Idris Elba in the building. My man, thank you for being on the show. Listen. The name alone rings bells. You're not just a actor, you're like a cultural thread because you've been on two shows that are like part of everyone's day-to-day -day life, The Wire and The Office. Which one do you get recognized for more? The Wire, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it's weird because The Office has seen like a real new spike. Young, younger audiences are starting to watch it now and like really watching it. And so I'm getting, you know, recognized by a bunch of G Gen Z. How often do you get stopped by people and they're just like, yo, they want to ask you if there's a new season coming, <laughs> yeah. or they ask you about super specific season, they're like, yo, season four, episode three, the, what was in the cup? The teacher's union. Yeah. What was, what was the subtext about the teacher's union? You know what? All I get to this very day is, where's Wallace? Where's, Wa uh, where's, where's, where's Wallace? Wallace, String? Where the fuck is Wallace? Huh? String. String. Look at me. Look at me! Where the fuck is Wallace? Where is Wallace? And you know, there, there are some diehard fans that, you know, hate me to this day. Like, nah, nah, Idris, nah. You know, I, I've moved on, you know what I mean? It's been a while, but they're like, <laughs> nah, I can't fuck with you, Idris, man. But do you take that as like a sign of respect that you encompass the role so well that people can't tell the difference between you and that character? Or is it just like, yo, come on, y'all, like, nah, let's look, move man, on. I, you know, as an actor, man, the, the biggest gift you can get is that people think you are that guy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's the biggest compliment yeah. they can pay you. I, I remember, though, for me, and I've said this before, you know, you know, people didn't know I was uh, English, and so when I would speak, they would be like, mm -hmm. get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Why are you talking like that, man? No, get the fuck, like, really, yes. they would be mad at me, like, no, nah, no. Nah, they almost felt like they were, uh, you know, <laughs> being duped, you know. And thankfully, man, listen, I've played enough roles that people kind of go, okay, yeah, I dig you as Lufa, man. I dig you as Heimdall or whatever, and moved on from Stringer. So. <laughs> and you're all over the place with it because you got Luther, you got, you know what I mean? Like, you, dog, you did Boasty. I was like, hold up, is that he just, is he rapping on this? No, like, no. I was like, bro. Listen, every time I see it, I was like, look at that work ethic. Like, yes. yo. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, show them how they do it. Listen, you know, when you're African, you basically work twice You work till you die, yes. <laughs> I love to see it. Yes, sir. Oh, man. What projects are you working on right now? So, listen, I just, um, so, Will Packer, you know who he is, the producer? Shout out to the homie, uh, yes. Will and I made uh, five, six films. This is our sixth film. We just finished a film out uh, in Cape Town. So I've been there for three months, and it's, uh, it's a story about a family that get sort of caught in the wilderness of Africa and get hunted by uh, a wild animal. And I don't want to say too much, but it's a lion, and it, get, it gets a little <laughs> bit freaky. So... For the last three months, my anxiety levels have been up here. There's no real lines in the movie, but right. I've been really, I've been running we get my you. life. The CGI lines got you nervous. We get you. It's nervous. <laughs> We're not around your house. Yeah. What's it like, though, when you go on a movie set and it's like, yo, I'm going to be living here for three months? Like, you know, family-wise, keeping in touch with people, all that type of stuff. It, it's always an adjustment, my guy. It's always, you know, like, you know, when it, I, I always liken my life to a clown, you know what I mean? Like a clown visits a new town, makes mm -hmm. everyone laugh, and then the lights dim and then they're off on their own, you know? And it's a bit like that, you know? You get used to the town, you fall in love with the crew, and, and then it's go. goodbyes. Like, I really do have goodbye issues. I, I'm not good at saying goodbye, you know what I mean? Like, at the end yeah. of this interview, if I just click off, don't take it personally, you know what I mean? It's just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> respect you, respect you. Talk about blood sport. Yeah, man, look. Bloodsport is one of these characters that's sort of in the vaults of DC Universe. He's famous only because he's the only guy to have put Superman in a hospital and uh, he's in jail for it when you meet him in the movie. 
Uh, right. I, you know, call me sick, but I'm kind of proud of that. I love Superman, by the way, but I am yeah, the yeah, guy I'm, that... I'll whoop Superman's ass, though. <laughs> Listen, that's a... If you whip Superman's ass, you're going to tell that story every time. You're like, you're like at the point... He, he going to tell about whipping Superman's ass. He'll be like, yeah, yeah. Like, everything that happened, you're like, oh, wow. You see the Nets lost? They got their oh, ass whooped. Oh, you know who else got their ass whooped? Superman. Superman, Superman when I whipped his ass, boy. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, all right. Trust me, man. I, anytime I can talk about that, I want to do it. So, um, and look, this movie, you know, is a reinvention from uh, Suicide Squad, which was a good movie also, but this is James Gunn's take on the new Suicide Squad, and it's actually, it's quite, it's quite fresh. It's very risque. It's very adult, you know what I mean? In order to play a character like this, how did you get into that mental state? Um, you know, and I'm not boasting, but having been in the Marvel world, you know what I mean? And, you know, I got to play Heimdall, and it isn't Heimdall's movie. This movie is DC, and I get to, you know, mm -hmm. it's my shit, so I get to kick ass in it. So I wanted to look and, uh, you know, be the part. But also, just because James Gunn really wanted me to uh, do some comedy, he wanted me to try and be, you know, subvert, you know, the tough guy stuff and get a bit funny and a little bit right. of sensitivity in there. And so that was kind of interesting to watch him try to mold me into that role. I think people will hopefully enjoy enjoy that aspect of it, you know? Listen, we got to talk about the DJ game. What is, what's your preference DJ-wise? Are you a vinyl guy, using Serato, CDJs? What do you use? Yeah, I'm a CDJs guy, like, you know, and I came from vinyl, man. When I was living in New York for a long time, I used to DJ with probably eight crates, you know, rolling around in my pickup truck with these eight crates. But now mm -hmm. I'm I'm definitely, you know what I mean, CDJs with my USB. It's way more convenient for that thing. Oh, yeah. I, I play Tech House, and so, you know, in a two-hour set, you know, you're going to rinse through a few songs, but, you know what I mean, that's the most convenient way for me. I love, this. by the way, I love vinyl. And um, there's, there's these CDJs now that actually emulate vinyl, so you literally can do the same thing. So I might, I might cop me some of those. Hey, hey, I hear you, bro. How can you, as a person that is of British nationality, whatever you want to call it, convince the United States that grime is real and, it's, and, and we should listen to it? on a regular basis. There's always been this cultural divide, you know what I mean? We see the UK, the US brethren, we salute, and like you lot always salute us, but do we really understand each other? Now, if you've got a chance to really pick apart some of the best grime artists, you know what I'm saying? Or mm -hmm. some of the best UK hip hop stuff, you'll learn a lot about our culture, especially like the, you know, there's a generation where I come from, which is, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 48, so, you know, the generation below me, the Skeptors, the Wileys, you know, those yeah. guys, those are the guys that really originated the grind. But when you go down a few generations, you go to like Dave, uh, mm -hmm. you go to Digger D and all these guys, these guys are telling Timmy me Temple what's really going on in the world and in the UK. So, uh, and they, and they're boring, they're really penning. So if you, if you can get over the learning curve of listening to the dialect and understanding the vernacs, you'll get into our culture a little bit. That's what you know I would what? say. It's true because I got cousins in Peckham and Brixton, and I remember being in the McDonald's of Brixton, and I was like, wow, this feels like the Bronx. <laughs> I was like, this feels like the... I was like, there's no... It's just accent. That was the only difference. I was like, I feel at home right now. Oh, uh, you were recently saying you didn't, you, had, you didn't enjoy working on the Thor movie? It was taken out of context. Listen, first of all, just to put the record straight, I loved working on uh, Thor. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And the Marvel family been very kind to me. And that character, you know, even though when I took the role on, you know, there was a lot of, a, you know, a lot of sort of negative press around me playing mm -hmm. it as a black man. Right. I still covered that role. It's one of my favorite roles. But yes. there was a junction when I had just finished playing Nelson Mandela in mm. uh, South Africa. And I was really, uh, you know, immersed in that character. It was a cultural icon. I had to do it justice. <laughs> so... I literally had to fly from there and run and do some reshoots on right. Thor. So when I got there, it was tough because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were in Nelson very... mode. <laughs> yeah, right. I was in Nelson mode, you know. My head was in a different place. And when I got there, the reshoots were very specifically around a flying shot where I'm diving and I had to harness and they, you know, they didn't have any of it ready. My costume didn't fit anymore. I mean, it, it was tough. And yes. reshoots always are historically, but I think the um took took yeah. took yeah. my words and made it sound like I didn't love playing Heimdall. I loved playing Heimdall, man. I'm very proud of it.
So I try not to overthink it, my guy. You know what I mean? Like, I remember I used to spend a lot of time on Twitter. I came off Twitter quick. I just felt like Twitter has this very sort of like negative uh, energy towards it yeah. and very easy to get misquoted or, your, your, you know, tweets grouped with something else. As a bit, uh, you know. Yeah. As a British man, how do you feel about England and the, uh, the World Cup? In the Euros? It was heartbreaking, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, um, this country has always, you know, in terms of sports, have always seen black players, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and we're going back to, you know, sort of John Barnes, who is like, you know, one of the first famous black players. And they've always faced racism, always, always, you know what I'm saying? In a way that you don't see on TV, but at the games, people are throwing banana skins at my guy, you know, terrible. But at this junction, you know, we, as a, as a nation, we, we had all come together for the Euros. I mean, it was a carnival. It was a right. carnival of spirits. Everyone was in high spirits. This is a great time for us. And then when, you know, we got to the wire and it didn't work out, and next thing you know, we're all monkeys and coons. Wait, what? Right. Like, it was what? heartbreaking, what? you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I was right. born in this country, very proud. I've paid my taxes all my life. I didn't feel welcome. I was like, well, mm -hmm. huh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you go from that to that? You know what I'm saying? And I feel, I feel it for the young players, you know what I'm saying? Like Saka, you know, this is his first Europe, big competition, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for his country to turn its back on him like that, at that junction, that was, you know, he's a brave guy because he's going to jump back on the field and kill it. But at the same time, man, right. it just hurt my feelings, really did. As a Yankee fan, I would to say I can relate, but like, eh. As brown people here in America, we yeah, yeah, see yeah. The, overall see the interactions yes. right there. Yeah, Idris, my God, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're out there making stuff, but yo, you sat down with us and we're big fans. Thank you for rocking with us. The most important part of the interview, what would you like your neon sign to say? I wanted to say, blood spot kick Superman's ass. There you go. <laughs> Take that, Superman. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Yo, the homie Idris Alba in the building. Man, All right? Man. Listen, if you want to see what he's in, ask your auntie. She knows. She knows. She got a post in her bedroom. All right? <laughs> Idris Alba in the virtual building. Yeah. Next time, I'll come and see you guys in New York, man, for real. Welcome to the Jesus and Mero YouTube channel. That's right, you know what I'm saying? Like, subscribe, you know what I mean? That's right, we got a lot of digital content in here to keep you up in between our shows. So be sure to like, subscribe, and you know, click watch another video. We out. Hit all the players, watch man videos, holla.